my being a member of the elite in 2015 and 2016 probably blinded me to the extent to which people didn't take seriously Trump's claims at their worst. I was someone who I heard the sound bites of his worst moments and was picturing that as I voted against him. That was the, the primary reason was I want to prevent the, even if it's a 10 or 20 percent chance that this guy is Hitler, right? That's how I was thinking at that time. And the past four years have, I think, fully disproven that kind of fear. Trump is not, Trump is a different kind of asshole. He's not an ideological fascist. And I think something, something Kevin Williamson wrote stuck with me about Trump, which is that a true white supremacist and a racist has an irrational loyalty to a particular tribe of humans, whereas Trump has no loyalty to anyone. He's not capable of it. He, he's loyal only to himself and his narcissism, which presents its own kind of danger, of course, and more than that, turns people off. So you saw he lost more of the white vote than of, of any race of vote. And that I have to imagine that it could partly be because of his management of COVID, but it could also just be fatigue at his personality. So I was definitely wrong about that in, in 2016, and it, it's made me rethink quite a lot about how thick the elite bubble is. And it's made me very sensitive to wanting to point out when the thickness of that bubble is leading us astray. My favorite example of this is the idiotic word Latinx. Mm. And I, I have, a, a, I think, a special hatred for this word <laughs> as a, a half Hispanic person who grew up hanging out with my Puerto Rican family in the, in the Bronx, where no one would be caught dead uttering such a stupid anglicization and bastardization of the Spanish language. And the polls find 98, 99% of Spanish speakers don't know what the hell you're talking about. And yet this is the word that is now the polite word for Latinos in the New York Times, in, out of Elizabeth Warren's mouth. And, and it's less of, it, that word is just a signal of how thick the bubble is. It's an obvious signal for those who would want to look at it. But in any event, I, I do, I, I shared your deep concern about the Kamala equity and equality tweet. The notion that she would tweet this the day before the election astounded me and wondered just from a practical point of view, who in her campaign thought that this would be a good idea? Is it that they're using Kamala to pander to the far left and, and keeping Joe to reassure the center? That could be a, maybe a workable strategy. Is it that the same staffers that think Latinx is a real word are just so in a bubble that they don't understand how rejecting the notion of equality explicitly for the much more totalitarian notion of equity could read bad to half the country. It could be that. Either way, as someone who has spent a lot of time on this podcast and in my writing, explaining why the notion of equal outcomes while it sounds amazing on its face and sounds like exactly what an anti-racist should care about, is actually a Trojan horse for totalitarianism. Right? And as listeners to my podcast will know, I'm trying to engage Ibram Kendi in a conversation primarily about this point because he is the really the intellectual face of the pro-equity argument at this moment and has advocated a way of getting to equity that is actually realistic in the sense that what it would take to get to equal outcomes is what we would recognize as totalitarianism. A central government pre-clearing every local, state, and federal law so that it, you know, to, to ensure that it doesn't increase racial inequality of outcomes, right? That, that's what Kendi has explicitly said he wants. And I don't think it's realistic now. I, I don't want to sound alarmist. I'm not fearing this in the next four years. But in the next 50 and 100 years, our attitudes about race and what the path forward is are going to change. That's a fact. The question is, in what direction are they going to change? I fear that in 50 years, the kind of effortless, 
Martin Luther King style of anti-racism that I grew up with that that really should be uh, our goal is, go- is going to be so far in the past that people don't even remember what it felt like to want that. <laughs>